everybody. You know me, Kirsty, the one that fixes her hair at the beginning of every video instead of going to the bathroom and actually brushing it. Hey, I'm in lockdown. Who cares? <laughs> the only shower to wash our bums. Okay, I wanted to not do that because that looks awful. I am so Leo, it's just cringeworthy. Okay, I'm doing a video to try and eliminate some of the fear, but also well, it might add a little bit of fear, but I think ultimately it'll help. I want to talk about, and I am talking about, and I'm going to put some in little interludes of other astrologers discussing the Saturn-Pluto conjunction in conjunction with what's going on at the moment yes the coronavirus I'll talk about it a little bit but not fearfully but also what's happening to the world as we isolate so please bear with me I'll put some timestamps down if you just want to skip ahead um, I want to say thank you for everybody for supporting me and I've had some a lady asked me if she wanted me uh, to get her to watch the ads so it would help me I find that so beautiful thank you to you that is just lovely but no you don't you don't have to watch the ads you can skip by them of course um, but thank you for watching I haven't done Ganon in a few days because look I'm gonna be honest I've had some really strange emails from some really lovely people and found some really odd things myself that I can't even talk about. I can't put it on Facebook, I can't put it on YouTube, but some really weird things are happening with Ganon. I'm pretty sure that people that have been doing this, like myself, Ganon's case, will probably feel the same. And I think it's because of what's going on at this time and the transparency, but also the realism of everything. It's almost like, it's not almost like, it is like Ganon is speaking directly to us. So there's a couple of elements of what's going on at the moment, which is affecting me personally. I'm finding it a little bit hard to do the astrology because the strength of the person that I'm doing astrology for, um, especially cases, especially Ganon, is so strong that I actually physically feel quite ill. So I have to stop that for a short period of time. So I wanted to do a video on Saturn and Pluto and what's going on at the moment and maybe some people will understand how I feel with this not feeling very well, um, not like Corona, I'm not sneezing and stuff, <laughs> but just this general feeling of like, oh, something's not good. I feel as though we're going to get to a point with Ganon where he's, it's just going to blow everybody out of the water, so I'm just, I'm going to leave Ganon be. I feel like he needs to rest, I know that sounds really weird. I'm hoping other people will understand that, but I feel like he needs to rest a little bit. I think he's working too hard to try and be found. I don't know. I, okay, anyway, I won't carry on about that. That's just me, like, talking to a video diary. <laughs> Let's get into it. Here is some astrology. I wanted to talk about what's going on in the world and how it is related to astrology. So I'm hearing all sorts of crazy things that this virus is connected to Saturn and Pluto and Capricorn and all sorts of things. So what I wanted to do was just clear up a bunch of things. Firstly, viruses are not in the realm of Saturn, Pluto and Capricorn. But I digress. I'm going to go back to the beginning. And first of all, I found an article where we, where I found that, okay, I'm going to explain this. This is the coronavirus bit. January the 5th, Chinese officials ruled out the possibility that this coronavirus was a reoccurrence of the 
SARS virus, which by the way, SARS, uh, coronavirus has a strain called Corona SARS. So it, it is SARS. It's respiratory st um, stress. Anyway, an illness that originated in China and killed more than 770 people in 2002. Anyway, January 7th, officials announced they had identified a new virus. The novel virus was named 2019 NCOV and was identified as belonging to the coronavirus family, which includes SARS, conveniently a lot of people don't talk about that, and the common cold. So what I wanted to do was firstly do a chart for January the 7th. Let's see what's going on. What triggered this downfall and the collapse of the economy as we can see it happening in front of our eyes. Now this is an article I found by Robert Glover on Star IQ, which is I think Rick Levine's site, I'm not 100% sure, but this is by Danny Gover. Saturn and the Great Depressions. Now I actually did a thesis on this in 2001, Saturn and Pluto and the cycles um, in correlation to war and then essentially afterwards depressions. So this is a very interesting time for me because my whole astrology career of 25 years has actually sort of led to this point. I've known about this transit for a very long time. Anyway, let's have a little read of this. It's really interesting. Every time the nation, and this is talking America, I believe, at this point, but every time the nation has sunk into Great Depression, a grand cross pattern has existed. So, first of all, I'll explain what a grand cross is. You will see it in a chart that I'm going to show you. It's where four planets or four areas of the chart are squaring each other and it literally forms a giant square which is I call it a grand square Americans tend to call it a grand cross this grand cross has been formed by transiting Saturn in mid Capricorn and another heavy planet in mid Aries both opposite and or square the United States natal Sun square Saturn okay so we're going into the United States chart here my interesting bit that I want to look at is this this Grand Cross has been formed by tra transiting Saturn in mid-Capricorn and other heavy planets in mid-Aries. This is the chart for the outbreak of coronavirus, 7th of January. Note Saturn and Pluto are exactly conjunct at 22 degrees. Also, please note this giant grand square. Saturn is in the middle, or a little bit to the right of Capricorn. It's conjunct Pluto, a very heavy planet. The only thing missing is we don't have a planet halfway through Aries. So once again, this now leads me on a different pathway. I'll show you. Okay, so here I just have a chart that I found of the exact conjunction of Saturn and Pluto this year on the 12th of January, where Saturn, Pluto and the Sun were all at 22 degrees, but Saturn and Pluto were at 22 degrees Capricorn, 46. So that was the 12th. So let's go to this timeline of the coronavirus. I hate the name of it. It's so crap. And uh, why don't you want to move? Oh, there we go. On January 11th, China announced its first death from the virus. It skipped to date. And then January the 13th, there was a reported case in Thailand, outside of China. So on the 13th, one day after the exact conjunction, the 13th, it got out of China. So this is why people are assuming that this aspect 
with Saturn and Pluto are to do with the virus. I'm going to say something just off the cuff here. I don't believe the virus is actually really a part of this. This is more, and I don't think it will be a surprise to anybody, but this is now more looking like the chart of the Great Depression. 1935, we had Saturn and Pluto opposing each other in Cancer and Capricorn. And now it's done a full cycle. And the day that the virus got out of hand, the two planets were conjunct. So it fits perfectly with the cycle of great depressions and depressions that occur. Uh, so it's not only 1935. In 1870, the Ameri uh, uh, America suffered its third Great Depression in the 1870s. Again, Saturn's trip through Capricorn formed a square with Neptune in Aries to create a Grand Cross. Okay, so that's the 1870s. The um, 1930s, 60 years later, USA went through the worst depression in history. Um, blah blah blah, showing us transiting Saturn at 13 degrees Capricorn, squaring Uranus in Aries to form the Grand Cross with the US Sun and Saturn. Uh, it'd be interesting to, to look at the US Sun and Saturn chart in comparison to the coronavirus chart. I will probably have a look at that in at the end of this video. When Saturn arrived in mid Capricorn. In the 60s, there was no heavy planet squaring Saturn from mid-Aries. There was no Great Depression. Instead, the developments of the 60s were unprecedented, Uran Uranus and transforming Pluto. That is what I believe we're going through. A little bit of this depression, but also we don't have anything squaring at mid-Aries. So are we going to have an unprecedented transformation? Uranus just moved into Taurus. Pluto is right behind Saturn in Capricorn. Things are going to change. Now, we may have to go through a depression. It may get a lot worse. But I can almost guarantee you it's going to get better. Okay. Anyway, so many people are saying, this is going to be okay. It'll get better. Obviously, use common sense. Don't go, oh, okay, the astrology says it'll be okay, don't worry about it. It's bad, it's a bad thing, but it's been nearing for a long time. And what I'm trying to sort of say is that it's a cycle, and it's a continual cycle that just never stops. So it's not unusual that this has happened. It's unusual that it has spread through the entire world, and that's social media for you. When the Ebola virus was around a few years ago, one million media outlets, or there was one million pieces of article on Ebola. Today, there is eight billion pieces of information on coronavirus. That there is the problem. Okay, so the Saturn-Pluto sy synodic, I can never get that word, synodic cycles is what I studied when I did astrology at school. Not school, at astrology school. So it's synodic astrology. It's the cycles. So this person here has gone from 1851 to 2020. Do you know, interesting, this is something that I've just noticed. All of us old school astrologers started writing about this way back. This Nick Anthony Fiorenza, well done, Nick wrote this in 2009. I wrote my piece in 2001. Some people have written theirs way before that. And every single piece finishes at 2020. Now, I don't mean to scare you, but it just interested me. I couldn't see beyond 2020. Looks like Nick here can't see beyond it either. Now, I don't know what that means, but we'll take that for what it is. Okay, so... I mean, this is, this is hard to understand. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but 
A few primary historical events are present in the context of Saturn-Pluto synodic cycles starting from 1851. Saturn and Pluto are retrograding from Earth's ge geocentric perspective, thus often stretching the synods, squares and midpoints over a few years, just like is occurring now with our 2010 square, although our current Saturn-Pluto synodic square occurs on June 11, 2010. The ge geocentric square begins on November 11, 2009 and continues until August 2010. Anyway, so this goes through, I mean look at this, crazy detail. I highly recommend it. It's on the page called lunarplanner.com. Have a read of this if you want to know about the Pluto, the cyclic Pluto, Saturn, Capricorn, war, bloody everything that's happened when Saturn and Pluto have gotten together, the triggers, the fixed stars, there's so much here. All of the events that occurred at those times, have a look at this page, it's very, very good. And that will give you an idea of the cycles and how we're living in a cycle. This is not anything out of the blue. This is something that's been happening repetitively year after year after year after year for hundreds of years. So I highly recommend having a look at this. I'm going to put a link down below actually. Okay, so back to this chart. This was the 7th of January when the coronavirus first became known. Now, I was mentioning before that the Sun and Saturn in the US chart, when they're looking at Great Depressions, etc., were squaring. This time we have the Sun conjunct Saturn and Pluto. So the square from s the Sun and Saturn in the US chart that, that they were talking about before, if we put it in the world, it's right there next to Saturn. So is it indicating to us that this is, well I think it is, it's indicating that this is bigger than other uh, sidonic cycles, so, so not, I'll get the word, the cycles because, well, I mean, I can see it's bigger because I've never seen anything on such a global scale. Even the world wars didn't really touch every single corner of the world like this. Um, the Great Depression was really terrible in America and obviously plenty of other places, but some other places weren't as bad as others. This is absolutely fluid amongst everybody. We're all in the same boat, and I feel like that's this Sun and Saturn he, um, here, next to Pluto. So, what else does this chart tell us then? Um, it, I think what I what I believe that it is leading to, and I found some, found out something interesting today. That. Well, Americans are going crazy getting their guns. They want to bear their arms. They want to do everything, you know. Everything that in 1775 was put into place. And now what's coming up? The Pluto return in a couple of years from the USA. So, oops. So to me, this is like a prelude to the Pluto return in the USA and I and I believe that the Pluto return in the USA is going to affect the entire world not just the USA so to me this is like a bit of a prelude to that now there's something that I do need to show you and I'm just going to grab another chart okay now this is the chart for today now we have all of this Capricorn again, the moon's gone back into Capricorn, which is no surprise as soon as everything starts hitting Capricorn things go awry but now we have Saturn at 29 degrees there which I hate, hate it there it's not bad, I just don't like it there I have my IC at 29 degrees of Capricorn so it's hitting my IC which, you know it, I'm not going to go into natal charts but when transits hit important parts like that it can be a bit difficult but what we see here is the sun is at 28, nearly 29. There's actually a sextile between Saturn and the sun. So it's the glimmer of hope. 
you know that's giving me this glimmer of hope the sun's in the ninth house there too which is interesting because that's you know around the world it's it, sh it sort of shows as well that uh, the travel was really put to really put to a stop um, a halt today um, now what was I going to show you from the last thing I can't remember oh okay that's right okay so Saturn at 29 degrees of Capricorn is going to move forward into Aquari Aquarius one or two degrees then it's going to go retrograde back into Capricorn at 29 degrees for the entire of July so July is going to be either the end of this problem or a kick up the bum and a new problem I'm starting to feel as though it may be the end of the problem I feel like it may take from now until then to possibly get over this whole thing through the world so yeah we have Saturn going to do a retrograde soon enough but unfortunately it'll head back to that 29 degrees and if anyone knows my channel they know that I do not like 29 degree planets it just shows the edge of everything and, and it's why we feel like we're on the edge of life Saturn is represents death literally Capricorn is death literally not always you're not going to die if you're a Capricorn but being at 29 degrees it's like we're on the edge are we going to die it, what's really going to happen you know we don't know um, we're not being instructed properly you know like I said before we're left to our own devices so it's interesting that all these are in the seventh house here because it's like I can't be left to my own devices at home the ho home is cancer I need other people I need people around me so it's interesting how it shows but anyway I digress once again the main thing to take from this is that the coronavirus didn't begin this problem this problem was already going to happen it just so happened that the virus was the thing that triggered it and now the snowball effect has turned into a whopping great problem for the entire world so it's not the virus it's the fear and fear is associated with Capricorn and Saturn I really don't like googling this stuff but it's it does give you a general idea Saturn is the planet of fear anxiety and anguish he's afraid of poverty disease living and dying economic uncertainty unemployment random terror oh, I've got a feeling that this person just wrote this probably yesterday or something if they didn't there then they're pretty good then no dates on it okay here we go selfishness Saturn is the planet of selfishness selfish is highly uh, selfishness is highly infectious it spreads through contact with the selfishness virus haha <laughs> this is a strange page to come across Saturn's selfishness is what is wrong with the world That's so true it causes people to become fearful, terrified, greedy, overcautious, gloomy, mean-spirited, crafty, cunning, secretive, pessimistic, hard, unfeeling and cold as ice. That is so true. And I just looked at this. This wasn't written just yesterday. This was written ages ago. This person's nailed it. The market always acts in its own greedy interest. Okay, so they're talking economics as well. Selfishness is always after the best deal it can get Saturn is tweeting an astral email that isn't fake news oh that's interesting selfishness and narrow self-interest are what is wrong with the world today and true love and affection Venus is what is right selfishness fear and poverty destroy the social fabric of communities man this person's accurate his narrow selfish thinking is unable to see that life contains infinite possibilities I'm really glad that I stumbled upon this orthodoxy and convention Saturn is guided by precedence established custom and traditional values 
He's backward looking, rear vision thinker. He's unable to originate, innovate or try something new. Now, that's the problem people are having. Innovation. They need to start thinking more for themselves. So hopefully some other planets will kick in and Uranus might help there. He follows tradition, takes a cautious approach, consumes consumes and acquires and views material prosperity as the only way to attain freedom from fear and want. This is uncannily very accurate to what's going on right now. Saturn plans carefully, is very efficient, hates waste and drives the con conservative political agenda. <laughs> Saturn is a model of restraint. Do you know, that is so, so odd. Well, it's not odd because that's what Saturn does, but this person's literally written it down as though it's today. Saturn is the planet of economy, thrift, frugality, cutbacks, downsizing, economic cons contraction, austerity measures, scarcity, lean times, bankruptcy, recession, depression, and old age. He's very price sensitive and likes to have serious fun spending money. <laughs> wow. Uh, he rules the farming sector, the mining sector, buildings, basic utilities, diseases in general. This is not a disease, it's a virus, it's different. Public health measures, oh, public health measures. The land that Mars fights over and the elderly. Saturn confers foresight, prefers careful planning and a patient approach and is noted for his safe pair of hands and diplomacy. Diplomacy is the management of international relations by a country's representatives. When Saturn is scared, he runs like the wind. Huh. Saturn's primary objective is personal security and he takes action to protect himself, his kin, his land, his home and his material possessions. How amazing is that? Actually, I could have just not done any of this video, made it five minutes and just read this article to you. It pretty much sums it up to a T. Now, I don't have a writer for this, but I'd really like to thank the person that, write, that wrote it. Astrologyforaquarius.com I like it. I think it's good. I mean, it shows the truth of Saturn, but it also shows very clearly what's going on right now. Okay, so thank you for the writer of that. I'm not 100% sure who it is, but thank you, Astrology for Aquarius. Pluto. Anyone can type this into Google and find it. Of all the planets in the solar system, Pluto is the furthest. It symbolizes the boundary between one life form and another. It's associated with reproduction and the process of rebirth. The individual faces a dead end situation and must often undergo a painful catharsis before he can move on. And that's what's happening. It's a rebirthing but not just of each one of us, the earth, and each one of us. We're down into a handful of videos, but what I want to cover today is, um, first of all, kind of like from the, well, first of all, I don't portray a medical professional on YouTube, um, so take care of yourself, do what you need to do, but I want to, again, try to give you some perspectives that may help you understand the bigger evolutionary picture so that you can, you know, not go into fear when everywhere you turn, you might find fear. Okay, um, number one, yes, we are all one. <laughs> a, yeah, we're all in this together. Uh, sun recently conjuncted Neptune, right? And then there's this uh, Virgo full moon. So Sun on Neptune together sit, puts highlight on the fact that we're all connected, and then Virgo full moon, but wait a minute, I need to be discerning and take care of myself. Yes, it's true. Yes, we're all one. It's easy to forget that or to let it be a vague spiritual principle that some of us return to daily or as often as we can to try to, you know, put faith in our collective evolution and try to like feed something positive in the collective and to try to, you know, evolve into compassionate, uh, loving people um, and get over our petty baloney. So yes, number one, yeah, we are all connected. When I saw a list of the countries affected, my, my mind did a double take because, um, what was it, um, China, Italy, Iran, 
and then some other countries. And I was like, well, what category did China, Italy, Iran, and a bunch of European countries fit into together? You know, and so I just, and I guess it was the inclusion of Iran in there, right? I'm used to hearing people talk about China-U.S. relations, etc., but but that kind of thing of it affects everybody. We are all humans together. So that's point number one. This is part of the learning and the teaching to realize with all the divisive stuff that's been coming up over, you know, thousands of years, but really escalated in the last few years with tribal concerns and tribal fears, stuff about immigration and political stuff and the rise of the far right. A lot of this has to do with intolerance toward each other. So, yes, we are all one. Number two, uh, this is part of our Saturn, Pluto and Capricorn learning. Yes, it was January 12th, about two months ago, where the conjunction for reals took place. But if you use it over five degrees, let's say March 2019 to November 2020, so we're still in this, I would call it this kind of zone of influence where these outer planets are are asking us to really evaluate how strong we are, uh, who's in charge. Now, this is from the words of Ayuta Bhava Daza. And I find it really interesting. I'm going to just play a little bit of it. I'm going, obviously, to ask permission to use this uh, and plug this person's channel down below in the description. So let's just have a little listen to this. They get together in a conjunction it is a relatively rare configuration, as are the squares or oppositions. So any time that you have a hard aspect from Saturn to Pluto, uh, it's, a more, it's a rare event. So astrologers generally pay a, a lot of attention to the configurations of outer planets. Um, they are often correlated with monumental uh, or... Uh, Tre tremendously important historical periods so that because the outer movements move the outer planets excuse me move very slowly they're often associated with um, movements in the collective that's the phrase that you'll sometimes hear if you'd like to see an article on the cyclic Saturn Pluto world movements there's a link down below to my article on it, so please have a look down there. You'll see some dates. Which is a way of saying that they transcend the the uh, the individual, though of course there um, is no reason that an outer planetary configuration cannot speak um, to the individual at a very deep level want to indicate or signify something about a, a, an important historical period. Okay, so um, one of the main reasons that I'm focusing on it now, I'm sure I will talk about it uh, at length in the future as well, because we're going to be thinking about this transit, and it's going to be something of a spiritual study for uh, those of us who are interested in astrology for a long time. So this will not be the last time that we'll talk about it. This isn't the final word or anything that, uh, you know, um, uh, and other astrologers will have a lot of good things to add. <clears throat> but the reason that I want to talk about it today is because the planetary moment that we're in right now, in, in this moment, this month, uh, in eclipse season, is in, um, in a lot of ways it's a sneak preview for the it's a, it's you know it's a sneak preview for the saturn pluto conjunction uh, we're getting a really good taste for what's coming through probably in about a year from now so before i go into talking at length about just saturn and pluto i want to try to kind of uh, rein things in and, and bring things back to just what's happening right now because that'll serve as a kind of, like I said, a, a kind of preview for a deeper talk about Saturn-Pluto. So what's happening right now? There's a couple of transits that are perfecting in the sky right now that um, 
all happening simultaneously in the next couple of days. Uh, and they all are a pretty good split between overall what I would say is a really hard Saturn vibe and a, a really expansive Jupiter vibe. Just to make it as simple as possible, right now you have Saturn, Mercury, Pluto, the Sun, the South Node, all in Saturn's home sign of Capricorn. Meanwhile, you have um, Venus, Jupiter, and Neptune in Sagittarius and Pisces, all in a square with one another. Those are both Jupiter-ruled signs. So that is the bulk of the planets that we pay attention to. We're not talking about Mars and Uranus. I found that really interesting because this was made on the 17th of January last year. And he's exactly right. We had a bunch of eclipses. We had a whole bunch of triggers. And the expansion that he was talking about between Jupiter and then the crowded Capricorn, which coincidentally is going on right now, um, it shows us what's going on, and it is. It's this giant Jupiterian thing with the Saturn undertones. So he was very right in his predictions a year ago. So I really like that, what that guy had to say. I just wanted to pop it in. Okay, now the nice part, little interlude. This is such a perfect heading. How humans slowing down due to the virus has had an impact on our planet. This is what I'm seeing. This is the beauty in all of this afterwards. The fear, the panic, it's all associated with Capricorn. Capricorn um, and Saturn, and Saturn especially being at 29 degrees as it was, and it's moving into Aquarius and then it will move back to 29 degrees Saturn. It's very pivotal. It was inevitable that there was going to be a huge impact on the world. Personally, I'm going to say that I didn't see that it would be a virus, but I knew something was going to happen. It wasn't going to be war, but something big was going to happen, and I, I couldn't quite pin it. But now it's very, very clear to me what's going on. So it's like this virus had to emerge whichever way it has emerged for this to happen. I mean, look at this. This is the canals of Venice. Dolphins and swans are swimming through this crystal clear water because it's not polluted by humans. There's the crystal clear water of the Venice. Now that was just it's never been like this in 60 years after six days of people not going on the on the canal it's it's clear as a bell can you imagine what this will do for the great barrier reef look at this you know this actually takes my breath away we're seeing such a global impact that's so huge and so scary but on the other hand there's this amazing beauty in it all what else have we got swans on the canals the can I, I i just can't believe the canals it's just beautiful there's fish there's, there's fish swimming in there they don't swim in there this pollution in china look at it now no pollution so what is the earth telling us i mean look look at this so, you know, a while ago, I said to my family, I feel like the earth is angry at us. And then all of a sudden there were these fires. And I thought, oh, no, we're going to, you know, that's why it's angry. We're going to burn. And then that went away. And now this come up. And it's almost like it's telling us you have one last chance. Slow down. Stop consuming. Stop the fear. And let the earth replenish itself every now and then maybe this is a perfect time for us to realize that we don't have to consume 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 we don't have to go and grab everything i mean we're seeing it all the people in the shops going absolutely nuts those people are very um very scared so either they've 
um, the, the Capricorn fear has just gotten to their soul and they can't deal with it um, or they're very greedy you know there's a couple of ways you can not everybody's greedy when they hoard some people are legitimately absolutely terrified that they're gonna die I don't know why toilet paper was the thing but anyway that's irrespective now because now the shelves are bare so now we are left to look after ourselves we see a transparent government but we can't rely on the government we have to look after ourselves we have to make our own choices and that's what Saturn and Pluto and Capricorn is all about so those that know astrology or those that don't what does Capricorn or Saturn always want us to do it wants us to slow down slow down it wants us to wait it wants us to be patient to learn boundaries to understand what's really going on in the world around us it couldn't be more clearer right now in this day and age it is so transparently clear it's amazing so what is this showing us right now what it's showing us is that the world the earth and each individual is going through intense rebirthing structural changes the coming together of Saturn and Pluto in Capricorn was and is a melding of the old and the new and shows us that it is time to begin to really get ready for the new world now so many people have been understanding this especially this transit but the feeling that something is going to happen astrologers admittedly mainly but as you've heard a few people say you know <coughs> you can't just say don't be scared because people are obviously scared it's it's in it's in the sky it's in our hearts it's everywhere we are the stars we are the stardust it's fearful it is scary but if we can look beyond it if we can learn from it if we can understand the dynamics of what earth is trying to tell us which is becoming really quite clear already as I've shown you with the lack of pollution and other things that's going on so quickly it's almost as if the earth has given us a reprieve it felt as though it was getting too much it was just all too much and too hard to understand what was going to happen next and then this ultimate transparency just occurred out of nowhere well, it's not out of nowhere transparency is by Neptune and we've had some cycles before this Pluto Saturn conjunction that included Neptune and I believe that this was when everything started to become more transparent more easy to see so it's a it's a dynamic between what we can see and what we can't what is huge and what's so small it's a vast comparison between two things it's huge and tiny it's taking us back to the way that we used to have to live it almost feels like we're going to go back into the 80s I was talking with a friend a very very smart friend who we agreed that social media is an absolute nightmare and it should go social media should go kids would go back out into the streets and play and read books 
and it would be a different world and I really think that those things may happen. So people that are addicted to social media maybe start to wean yourself off of it because I really think it's going to go. I think it has been um, obvious that that's the problem that we are going through is the fear of so many people and being able to talk to each other about that fear. I mean as a community it's good to be able to discuss things like that but it doesn't work out like that as everybody can see. It just ends up in more fear, more arguments, more problems. As I said there's eight billion pieces of information about this virus. Eight billion compared to one million when Ebola was around. So to me social media is absolutely you know it's time to go. So what is social media in astrology? To me social media is the 11th house. It's Aquarius. And it's everything that all these planets and Saturn itself are going to move into. We're going to have a conjunction in Aquarius at some point. We can continue to hold on to our devices and our phones and everything and, you know, greed, material, give me this, give me that. It's not going to allow us to happen. It, it's not going to allow that to happen in the universe. It just, it has a plan. You know, it does these cycles repetitively. This cycle is huge and it is showing us that we are going down the wrong pathway. The fear that spread through social media, insanity. Like I said, everything will move into Aqu Aquarius at some point in the next few years. I'm hoping that social media will take a giant leap or just disappear. Personally I think it would be better if social media just went away. I mean that sounds bad because people have photos and memories and everything. I'm sure there's something that can be done to, to sort all that out but I'm sure people will agree with me that if we didn't have social media we wouldn't be so damn scared. Now that's not to say that we wouldn't be scared at all because that's what this is all about. It's fear. But the social media has absolutely made it a hundred times worse. So let's hope that when everything moves into Aquarius, we develop some higher level thinking and actually realize what the hell's going on. Because thi at this point in time, it's just showing us Earth, where we are on Earth, not literally where we are, where we stand with Earth and how the Earth doesn't need us. We're lucky to be here. So it's a wake up call to start looking after the earth, each other, our families. Everything is more important than materialism and, f and fear. And, you know, I'll be the first one to say that the media, the government, and everybody, which is Saturn ruled, the government have put fear into us and now they're trying to backtrack and then I don't know if anybody watches Australian news but our premier got on and just shouted at everybody stop it stop it <laughs> you know he, that's it's literally he couldn't get the way out, out anymore that usually you hear politicians going it's going to be okay everything will be fine blah 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 he couldn't hack it he's like just stop it you're being so stupid stop it and that to me is 29 degrees of satin <laughs> It made me laugh. I mean, he's not helping. We should all be in lockdown, I think, personally. But it, it, it's like, I've had enough. No more. This is it. But he's going to tell everybody about it. So that's the transparency of the government at the moment. But that also will be good because we're not, although we don't really know what's going on now, something's going to happen soon enough when Neptune, probably, I'll take a guess here, when Neptune gets to 22 degrees of Pisces and hits the conjunction that was, we will see everything going on within the government and we'll have a say. It's not just going to be we don't know what's going on, we will start to know what's going on. So I truly feel as though that this will lead into something different and better. 
I don't think it's going to be easy. I think it's going to be hard, and it is hard. It's very scary. But as I've said all the way through this, that's what Capricorn does. It scares us. But it scares us into sorting our shit out. And you can see that the mass panic, the, the buying of everything in the shops, toilet paper. Paper is ruled by Mercury and the third house. The toilet is ruled by Scorpio. Do we have Mercury in Scorpio at the moment? No, it's in Aquarius. It hasn't been in Scorpio in ages. I, I, I actually can't understand the toilet paper thing. I'll get to the bottom of it and I'll show you some charts. There has to be something. <laughs> but anyway, look, I'm not going to carry on. My, my point is, is that this is cyclic. It's been happening for years. This is a big one. But use logic, common sense help each other out don't spread more fear you know stay home and do whatever you have to do to look after yourself and your family but don't jump on facebook and the internet and everything spreading fear i mean if uh, one thing as well that i will say it is absolutely imperative in the news that is correct i'll show you um let's just type in coronavirus update on Google okay so there's a whole bunch of crap here I wouldn't believe that Washington Post wouldn't believe that wouldn't believe that this is the place you need to look for information health departments the World Health Organization this area here Forget the news, forget the media, forget Facebook. It's crap. You are being fed misinformation. People do not know how to distinguish the truth from lies. And people are panicking more and more and more. Now, obviously, some of the news is going to be okay. But I've seen some news where they've copied information from when SARS was around. And then put it in the context of coronavirus. When I checked up on the dates, none of them matched. So please be really weary of the news that you read at the moment. It's another thing about transparency. We're seeing, you know, if you can see it, you can see that it's all a load of bullshit. So the only place I ever go for news on coronavirus, if I need to look, is the World Health Organization. It's the only place that's going to tell you the true facts. So all of these places, the Huffington Post... Channel 7 News, Channel 9 News, Fox, CBN, any of those, bullshit, don't believe it. Go to the World Health, uh, World Health Organization to get your truth. Okay, I've been talking for ages, but I just wanted to give my little update. I'm not going to leave it on that. Who wants to look at that coronavirus crap? So, yep, this is what we're going through. Saturn at 29 degrees, it's going to go forward. It'll return retrograde back to 29 degrees. That will either be the end of the fear or the fear might take off a little bit more. Now, I've heard that there's going to be closures possibly for schools for six months. You know, that is going to change everything. And it'll go beyond July, obviously. So I'm wondering, we can take only take it day by day. And we can't even look at the moon for this. It's just too too big to look at the moon even. Because the moon gives us always a day by day thing, you know. Um, so, you know, if they close schools and whatnot down for six months, then we're in trouble. Uh, then we need to start making other arrangements for all sorts of different things. So, let's just take it day by day, like I said. Um, it could last until January, it could last throughout Janu uh, July, sorry, it could get worse through July. But I do think that this might sound weird, but is a necessary thing. I'm not going to buy into all of this, the, the, the world is culling, uh, you know, the government wants to cull 95% of the population. I mean, it may, it may be the case, it seems like there is some underlying something that we're not being told about but i don't like to feed into conspiracies so 
I do what I do best and that is astrology and for me at the moment the charts are just telling me to not be fearful to let go of things that mean nothing to you let go of materialism enjoy time with your family and not just two weeks isolation time like really change your life and enjoy your family and take care of the earth maybe we need to just travel less stay home a little bit more often don't consume everything if the world can fix itself in six days imagine what it can do in six months okay guys you take care Everybody be safe, wash your hands, all that stuff. And for God's sake, don't take all the toilet paper. Please let some old people have toilet paper. See you guys.